Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Welcome to all of you on this Easter Sunday, and a special welcome to all of our visitors and guests who are here with us this morning. We want our visitors and guests to know that we practice open communion. We invite all baptized Christians to receive the Lord's Supper with us this morning. After the service, all the children who are here today are welcome to go into the fellowship hall. We have a special Easter gift for all of you. Also, after the service, we invite and welcome families to stay and take pictures in the sanctuary. A reminder to our church council members that our monthly meeting is tomorrow, Monday at 7 o'clock p.m. Please let Tom Iser know if you will be able to attend. Next week, the 24th, is our Spring Youth Sunday. There are still plenty of parts available for the service, so please let me know if you would be interested in leading part of the service. Also next week, we will be trying out something new and having God's Kids Club move to a new date and time. So starting next week, Sunday, April 24th, we will meet immediately following the worship service. Please stay for the fun. Tickets for the Spring Fling on May 22nd are still available. Please see Ronnie Dale, Daryl Weller, or myself if you would like a ticket. More information is on the flyer in your bulletin. The other announcements I leave to your own reading. Are there any other announcements for this morning? Let us begin with prayer. O Lord, our Maker, Redeemer, and Comforter, we are assembled in your presence to hear your holy word. We ask you to open our hearts by your Holy Spirit, that through the preaching of your word we may be taught to repent of our sins, to believe on Jesus in life and death, and to grow day by day in grace and holiness. Hear us for Christ's sake. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, so that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who lives again and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. 
You may be seated as we continue with the readings. The first, the first reading is from Exodus 15, verses 1 through 11, found on page 110 in your Pew Bible. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song to the Lord. I will sing to the Lord, for he is highly exalted. The horse and its rider he has hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him. My father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a warrior. The Lord is his name. Pharaoh's chariots and his army he has hurled into the sea. The best of Pharaoh's officers are drowned in the Red Sea. The deep waters have covered them. They sank to the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, was majestic in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shattered the enemy. In the greatness of your majesty, you threw down those who opposed you. You unleashed your burning anger. It consumed them like stubble. By the blast of your nostrils, the waters piled up. The surging waters stood firm like a wall. The deep waters congealed in the heart of the sea. The enemy boasted, I will pursue. I will overtake them. I will divide the spoils. I will gorge myself on them. I will draw my sword and my hand will destroy them. But you blew with your breath and the sea covered them. They sank like lead in the mighty waters. Who among the gods is like you, O Lord? Who is like you, majestic in holiness, awesome in glory, working wonders? The second reading is from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 11, found on page 1789 in your pew Bible. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved. If you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, he appeared to me also as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and I do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether <clears throat> then it was I or they, this is what we preach, and this is what you believed. Here ends the reading.
Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the first verse. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Dear brothers and sisters, grace and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. But imagine what it must have been like over 2,000 years ago. Imagine that you are one of Jesus' followers. Imagine that you had just spent the Passover celebration with him as a special meal with you. Then, after celebrating that meal, imagine that you watched him suddenly and unjustly be arrested by the authorities, put on trial by both the religious and secular governments in a kangaroo court, and sentenced to death on false charges for no other reason than the religious and the secular authorities wanted him dead. Then, Imagine that you had watched Jesus unfairly be put to death by being crucified, a method of execution that was normally reserved for the worst kind of criminals, especially murderers and traitors, neither of which Jesus actually was. Imagine that you were forced helplessly to watch someone you had followed, trusted, learned from, watched people's lives be changed by, watched heal and raise the dead, and most of all, someone from whom you had learned who God really is and what it means to be part of his kingdom and family. But then, imagine that as you were watching him die, you were wondering if following him was really worth it. You had thought that he would be the promised Messiah, the king whom God would send to overthrow the Roman government, and reestablish Israel as an independent nation once again. You thought that he would bring in a new age where God would reign supreme in victory. But here he is, dying on a cross. Most of his other disciples have fled and left him to die. He is mainly surrounded by his enemies, who mock and slander him even more as they enjoy watching him die. So you are wondering if, Jesus, if anything Jesus had promised, the new age of God's victory was ever going to happen. Then, imagine that you are one of the people who had to take Jesus down from the cross after he had died and lay him in a tomb. But even then, you weren't allowed to come and pay your respects to him because of the Sabbath and special holiday during which everyone who came in contact with a dead body would be considered unclean and would thus be disqualified from celebrating the holiday. Nothing seems fair and nothing makes sense. Jesus is dead for false reasons. His enemies have won. His followers have been scattered. His mission seems to have, seems to have been stopped. What hope? is there for you. Then, after all this tragedy, imagine you hear something that even makes less sense. 
Some women have gone to the tomb after the Sabbath to prepare Jesus' body, and they report, and they report something that sounds ridiculous. Jesus' body is gone. Where is it? Did someone steal it? Did it get moved somewhere else to be buried? Where did it go? What is more, two men in dazzling white clothes asked the women, why do you seek the living among the dead? And then the men remind them of something you've heard Jesus repeat, but you probably didn't really understand until now, that Jesus was going to be delivered into the hands of his enemies, be crucified, but then come back to life after three days. Could that have really happened? Did Jesus literally mean what he said? If he really is alive, then where is he? If he is really alive, where did he go? The words the men speak seem ridiculous, but they are true. He is not here. But the reason he is not here is not because his body has been stolen or has been taken somewhere else to be buried. He is not here because he is alive again. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. He has done exactly what he promised he would do. And he has come back to life. He has won victory over everyone who wanted to put him to death. He has won victory over the power of sin, death, the devil, and all the powers of evil. He has won victory over death itself by dying on the cross and rising again, paying the penalty for our sins. By rising again, Jesus has won, and his victory is our victory. Whatever we are having to deal with, whatever we are having to fight, Jesus has already won victory over it. The words, he is not here, do not mean he is no longer with us. They mean he is no longer in the tomb because he is alive. Because he is alive, he is everywhere even here with us. The whole point for Jesus dying and then rising again was, that he, was so that he could no longer be limited in his human form. He could no longer be limited to one place at a time. Now that he is risen, he can be everywhere at once. Is that possible? Is that really possible? We know that with God, all things are possible. So we know where Jesus is. He is here with us. Because he is risen, he is everywhere. Yet we still wonder if he is still here, because there is so much trouble in the world today. Wherever he seems not to be, he is actually there. Wherever people are suffering, he is there. Wherever people are sorrowing, he is there. Wherever people are in need of justice, he is there. He is with the people of Ukraine, especially Kharkiv, Mariupol, Bucha, Kiev, and all the other places that have been bombed or attacked. He is with the refugees of Ukraine and other places who have had to flee their homes because of fighting. He is with the people of Ethiopia, the Middle East, West Africa, Myanmar, and many other places which continue to be torn apart by war and bloodshed. <clears throat> he is with everyone who has had to flee their homes because of natural disasters, especially in most recent days, the people of South Africa and New Mexico. He is with everyone who is suffering because of wars caused by religion, especially in the Middle East and Northern Ireland, and is with everyone who just wants to live in peace with their neighbors. He is with everyone who is living in anywhere where there is famine, 
where people are struggling to find food and just to survive. He is with everyone who is struggling to live from paycheck to paycheck. He is with everyone who is wondering where their next source of income is going to come from. He is with everyone who is struggling to, with having to make a major life decision. He is with everyone who is unemployed, looking for work, and unable to find work. He is with everyone who is struggling to feed themselves or their families. He is with everyone who is growing older and having to adjust to a new living situation. And he is with everyone who is helping an older relative adjust to a new living situation. He is with everyone who is currently suffering from or who has suffered from the coronavirus. He is with everyone who has lost a family member or friend to the, to the coronavirus. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is suffering from cancer or any illness. He is with everyone who has lost a family member or who, who has lost a family member to, to, re, to recent death. And he is also with those who, even after many years, continue to mourn the loss of a loved one. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is struggling to get through the day and through life because of mental conditions. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is struggling to function and keep going from day to day because of depression. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is lonely. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is struggling with addiction and who is struggling to recover from an addiction. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is being bullied. He is with everyone and is on the side of, of everyone who is suffering from any kind of abuse or who has been abused. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is struggling with a dysfunctional relationship. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is dealing with a difficult job situation. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is a victim of human trafficking. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is being discriminated against for any reason. He is with everyone and is on the side of everyone who is oppressed or persecuted for any reason. Because he rose again and won victory over death, he will win victory over the powers of death, illness, oppression, fear, and sin. Most of all, he is with us in each and every situation we have to deal with and will bring us victory. He will bring victory to any of us who are struggling with illness. He will bring victory to any of us who are struggling to win in life. He will bring victory to any of us who are struggling to make a major life decision. He will bring victory to any of us who are struggling to find work, food, and everything needed for life. He will bring victory and justice to everyone who has been suffering from injustice. He will bring victory and justice to everyone who is being hurt, put down, bullied, or abused. He will bring victory and justice to everyone who is being victimized by violence. He will bring victory and justice to everyone who has been made to feel lonely, isolated, or excluded. He will bring victory and justice to any of us who, for any reason, are simply tired of fighting. He will help and rescue any of us who are in any kind of helpless, harmful, and hopeless situation. He will not leave any of us to suffer because he has already won. He will, in fact, usher in a new age, a new age where he and his will will reign supreme, where he will bring victory and justice to everyone who has had to fight and suffer for far too long. He will bring peace to the world and an end to war, violence, and division. 
He will bring peace to the world and an end to injustice, exploitation, and abuse. He will bring peace to the world and an end to hatred and selfishness. But this is not something that will happen far off in the distant future. The future is now. Jesus has already won victory over his enemies and our enemies. He is bringing his victory and peace even now and causing everything he wants to happen to happen now. So where is he? He is here, right here. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. together let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God, Christ Jesus, and for all people according to their needs. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women at the tomb and inspire us to share your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, Sustaining God, your creation of God the signs of new life in budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants to provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy, Encouraging God, you do a new thing among us. We pray for those gripped by fear and anxiety or who suffer in any way. Send us your healing presence to places of hunger, pain, illness, or overwhelming sorrow. Lord, your mercy. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community of faith a sense of joy and wonder and exploring new ways of faith. Formation, worship, and discipleship. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Resurrecting God, you make us alive in Christ. Thank you for blessing us with faithful witnesses who now rest in you. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated for our choir.
Please feel free to place your offering in either one of the plates at the back of the sanctuary. We wish to let our visitors and guests know that you are under no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and at all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and ever-living God. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of our Lord, for he is the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who by his death has destroyed death and by his rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. The night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood which is shed for you 
and for all people for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. This is the Lord's table, to which he invites all who believe and are baptized to come and feast on his body and blood. As the deacon directs you forward, please feel free to form a single file line down the center aisle. If you desire to receive communion today, you are invited to hold your hands out in this or a similar fashion. Children and all others who are not yet receiving communion are welcome to come forward to receive a blessing. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Come, for all is ready.
Please stand for our post-communion liturgy. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen.
Enable us to receive him always with thanksgiving and to conform our lives to his through the same Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.